Printing a rocket in 60 days and creating a rocket engine out of three parts seems like a fantasy. Yet that's what Relativity Space is doing with growing confidence as they plan to bring their Terran 1 rocket online this year. And they've got an even more exciting proposal with the Terran R, a two-stage reusable rocket made out of stainless steel and using methane as its fuel. It's easy to dismiss Relativity Space as yet another small sat launch company, but they've got some very interesting technology going on behind the scenes, and venture capital is loving it. Relativity's story starts at USC's Rocket Propulsion Lab. There, Tim Ellis and Jordan Noon would meet each other and begin a friendship that would eventually become co-founders of Relativity. Tim Ellis worked on propulsion at Blue Origin, and Jordan Noon worked on helium in the Super Draco thruster at SpaceX, and Tim Ellis says that it was at these jobs that they saw the potential of rocket printing, but also the underutilization of it at these companies. In 3D metal printing, they saw the future of rocketry, and so they both decided to walk out of their jobs after tons of calls on their hour-long commutes, called Mark Cuban from Shark Tank, got $500,000 in seed funding, and in the six years since that day in 2015 have grown their company into one with a $4.2 billion valuation, 135 employees, the largest metal 3D printer in the world, and a rocket slated to launch this year. It's the stuff startup dreams are made out of, and it's reality for relativity space. Yet, you still have to ask yourself, what makes them different from all the other companies looking to bring a small sat vehicle to market? And obviously, the thing that jumps out is their 3D metal printing process. They own a 3D printer called Stargate, which uses an aluminum alloy specifically designed to withstand the heat stresses of 3D printing. 3D printing also has some clear advantages over traditional aerospace manufacturing methods like milling or molding. It's the fact that, first of all, your assembly doesn't have to be constantly supervised and involve human labor in the actual assembly of the product. And when it comes to milling, where you remove most of the material in the process up to 90%, especially when it comes to aerospace where you're trying to get every gram down, printing allows you to just print as much as you need, while milling can be a torturous exercise when it comes to aerospace, often involving huge slabs of aluminum or other materials. And it also allows for quick iteration. When you're printing something, you don't have any tooling that needs to be replaced every time you change your design. Unlike traditional methods, you can iterate as much as you want with very little hardware changes. In fact, they want their rocket to be 95% printable, with only the turbo pump bearings and electronics being the non-printed parts of the rocket. And I want to start talking about that rocket, starting with its Aeon 1 engine. The original Aeon 1 engine design called for 17,000 pounds of thrust, but after conversations with customers, it was decided the engine's thrust should be scaled up to 23,000 pounds. This also necessitated a change in the type of cycle used from an open expander cycle to a pretty simple but high thrust gas generator cycle engine, just like you see on the Merlin. Now, engines are basically the heart of every rocket, and it's important to get them down early, and Relativity has certainly shown that. They've done over 500 firings of their engine, which they say can be built in 15 days out of a heat-resistant nickel alloy and contains less than 100 parts, which is great for any rocket engine. And of course, it'll be using methalox, methane, and oxygen, the fuel of the future, and they specifically cite ISRU production on Mars as one of the benefits of this, which is really interesting, I think. So while nine of these Aeon engines will be on the first stage, only one will be on the second stage, a vacuum-optimized Aeon 1, and both stages are of course going to be 3D printed using an aluminum alloy developed in-house by the largest 3D printer in the world, the Stargate. It was developed also by Relativity Space, and they plan to use it to pump out rockets every 60 days. The Terran 1 is supposed to be 100 feet tall and 7 feet wide, with a 3 meter wide and 7 meter tall fairing sitting on top. In a great interview with Tomorrow, which I'll link in the description below, Tim Ellis, the CEO, said that their fairing size could also be quickly adapted thanks to 3D printing technology to adapt to the needs of the payload. And the Terran 1 boasts a pretty respectable payload of 1,250 kilograms to a slightly lower than normal reference orbit of 185 kilometers. The Terran 1 is also capable of taking 900 kilograms to a 500 kilometer sun synchronous orbit which compares very favorably with the Electron and Launcher 1, which can take 300 kilograms and 500 kilograms respectively 
into a 200 km low Earth orbit. This allows the Terran 1 to target a very lucrative launch market, which Tim Ellis in the interview identifies as the roughly 500 to 900 kg range, which has as of yet been pretty unaddressed as it's a little too high for rideshare payloads and obviously can't be launched by any of the aforementioned launchers, and also has a very hard time justifying being a main berth slot on anything like a Falcon 9 or even Soyuz. And it's actually for that reason why the Terran 1 is the most booked rocket in American private space other than the Falcon 9. Relativity's first contract was with Telesat for multiple launches of the Terran 1. They also made a contract with Moose Space to launch one of their satellites into low Earth orbit in the second half of 2022. A contract with Spaceflight Industries, a satellite rideshare provider, was signed in 2019 for the third quarter of 2021 which looks like it may be pushed back a little, but that contract does have room for a quote-unquote unspecified number of additional launches. In 2019, they also signed a contract with Momentus Space to launch one of their Vigoride space tugs into orbit, with an option for five additional missions if that one goes well. A contract with Iridium signed in June of 2020 was signed for the launch of six spare satellites for Iridium's next constellation, and Iridium said that they chose Relativity Space because of their flexible launch capability and their ability to launch one satellite at a time, with these launches not to begin earlier than 2023. Lockheed Martin also announced that it would launch a cryogenic liquid hydrogen management demonstration mission on Terran 1, specifying that it would use Momentus's Vigoride transfer vehicle to house the payload. Momentus is not really doing well right now, but I guess we'll see how these contracts pan out. And Relativity Space has been no slouch when it comes to fundraising either. They've raised $1.2 billion to date and just closed a $650 million Series E funding round just last month in order to fund the development of their Terran R rocket. And the Terran R is looking like it's going to be a beast of a rocket. That is, if it can get off the drawing board. It plans to use 7 Aeon R for reusable engines on the first stage capable of 302,000 pounds of thrust each, all built by the same 3D printers they're using on the Terran 1. The first stage will be made out of the same aluminum alloy they're using for the Terran 1, while the second stage will be made out of more exotic materials. Needless to say, this is an extremely ambitious step, but I think it's one that's needed, I think, in the spaceflight industry, especially the small set industry. Boldness is often rewarded, and while we don't have too much information on the Terran R yet, there's a couple interesting things that jump out at me. Landing the second stage with only one vacuum engine seems like a pretty hard task, along with the lack of any heat shield on the second stage, and the fact that they have no reusability experience, not to mention orbital experience, all strike me as huge hurdles to the Terran R. But there are a couple key pluses. They're already using Methalox as a design, unlike Rocket Lab, so they've already got the engine technology to start working on the Aeon R, which is much higher thrust. 3D printing is going to allow them to iterate quickly past any design flaws they encounter, which if you've seen Starship development in the past couple years, they're definitely going to change the design. But I think one of the biggest takeaways I get from Terran R and just my first impression of Relativity Space is that they're a company that appeals to investors. 3D printing, full reusability, responsiveness to the market, and even their startup story. And I think that's a really important thing to do when you don't have a wealthy backer behind you. Relativity Space is playing the game, and it looks like they're playing it pretty well. It just remains to be seen how many issues they have with the Terran 1, and how they can translate the hopeful success of the Terran 1 into a sustainable plan to grow, especially with the Terran R, which I do want to say is a great concept. And if SpaceX is anything to go by, daring concepts are often rewarded in the spaceflight industry. I wish Relativity Space the best of luck on their upcoming flight of the Terran 1, and especially in their development of the Terran R, which I just love. With that, I'm Cosplus Content, signing off.